Crafty Friends, Nana Kay here. We are still working on the um, altered book using the Blue Tranquility Digital Journal Kit that is available at Nana Kay Designs right here. Um, if you want to get one and follow along and do your own journal. If you don't want to do an altered book, just bear with me because we also have the full page um, prints done. And we are going to actually download those and, um, not download, excuse me, print them and actually start on that journal in a little while, but it'll still be with this kit, but it'll be a, a journal made from absolute scratch. Everything will be print, pre, pre, not, not pre-printed, but everything printed by, by us on our shop location. Um, a little while ago, we finished actually doing what we call the secondary prep. Now, again... The, fir the first, the primary prep, the first prep is where you go in and take an old book and you rip out the pages and you decide how many of uh, the base pages you're going to have in your book. That also kind of determines how much you ever want to be able to put in it once you get, get the kit in. And then the secondary um, prep, which is what we just got through with, is where we go in and we actually put the um, journal printed journal pages that we've just done and backgrounds and the stitching and just little odds and ends which we, we prep everything so that we can start on putting in our ephemera our flip pockets our window pockets and all kinds of little things that we do extra so we got to that point this last page i had not decided what to do with it. I, I really wanted this pencil and that's what I'm going to do. So that's, I've got a bunch of colors now that, that kind of match what we're doing. I've got my little brushes ready to go. I'm going to set them aside and over here to my right, I have my pack of, of all my, my little stencils. I've got some new ones that's come in recently. And I'm going to probably use some of those. So I'm going to go ahead and get them out of the plastic. I don't know even what they look like. I've ordered so much stuff lately. I don't know. This is one of my all-time favorites. I love the corners that they make. I kind of like that swirl. And, I'll, and this is a rose. And, of course, the rose would go beautifully with this kit. I kind of like the swirl, so maybe a little bit of I think I'm going to basically work with these smaller ones today. I don't really think I want to work with any of my larger journals. So I've got two of those roses. This is wildflowers, and of course they would really go because I have one set of one book page that has um, wildflowers in it. This is a beautiful vine. And I think I have a honeycomb set. I'm not sure. I'm just pulling from my pack over here to the right, so just bear with me a minute. Uh, I, I've got a lot of that type shaped flower too in my in this particular journal. I'm just looking to see what I've got so I can make up my mind what I want to use. I've got a lot of wildflower. A lot of wildflowers. Okay, so, well, let's start. I really kind of like some of these odd little shapes like this. So I think in this corner, I'm going to go with the blue. And this blue is so new, it's probably going to really be dark. And I don't, that's one thing I don't want. I don't want it extremely dark in this corner. But that's not too bad. Go that way, and then we're going to go again asymmetrically, maybe. Just a little bit. Not quite as dark, so that we might can add another color on top of this one. Okay, so we've got that page done. And um, we're going with this pocket, so the bottom really wasn't all that important. We're going with this bird on one of these pockets. So, I need to look at those colors a little bit, and we definitely got some tops of tea stain color there, but I want to go, do I want to go with the rose? No, I really want to go with the other shape, and I just had it in my hand, and now I don't know where I laid it down. I hate when I do that. 
I'll cut this too. I'll lay that to this side. I might can just kind of, kind of, I don't want to corner it. Let's go aside a minute. I just had a big flower that I wanted to use. I like this wildflower. I'm going to lay that there a minute. It was, <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, I cannot believe that quick on this messy desk that I laid that one aside. It wasn't this leaf, that's the rose leaf. Uh, it wasn't that one. It's going to work. <sighs> I really don't want all of them. I just might want down here, peeping out. Oh, I like that one right there. I'm going to split this particular one up in two colors. We're going to do, I'm actually going to stencil it more to the color like this. This is sage green I'm using now on this back corner here. Okay, and then the flower, I'm going to pop in this um, Victorian pink. There again, that's a really dark color, so I'm just going to kind of lighten it up a little. Okay, that got that one in that corner. Still not the design I want the blue in. I'm really aggravated now. I don't see it on the floor, so it has to be right here. This is one thing I hate about. Aha, I think I found it. Yeah, that's what I want. I've already used the blue, but I do want, I think I want the blue. I think I'm going to do this little pink and then some blue. I want blue on it, definitely, because this is... Okay, let's go. Very light, very light dusting of pink first. Okay. Very light dusting of pink. I have to look at that and see if I'm getting it. And I am. So I'm getting that light dusting of pink that I'm going to get first on there. So then I'm going to come back over that with this blue again. And this time I'm going lighter because I don't want to overpower. But, you know, blue is our color here. Oh, I got too much right there, but that's okay. Let's see what it looks like. That's perfect. I'm not going to do anything else. That, that turned out really good right there. Now, when we put this pocket in, I think we've got all the stencil and stuff. Maybe just a little something right here. And I might just want, I don't want that flower. Uh, I think I can find that little daisy I just did. Might can come in here. <laughs> and I'm going with tea stain. Do a little tea stain. I did a little tea stain vine in here. Now this is this is a tea stain or well, tea dye on this corner here. And there we go. Alright, that's that's that side. And look at the page again. We're either going to go with this beautiful herring here, which I like, or the flower, which I like. And I think this is the one I'm going to put on this side. And I pretty much think I have this one cut where I want it. Maybe not. Okay, so now let's just kind of set our book aside a minute. We're definitely going to have to trim up. So I have got one, two, three in the center here. And then it looks like on each side beyond that, we've got almost like one and a quarter. Let me cut, close my eyes up because we'll do the other page in just a minute. There's something a little different stenciling. Okay. So I need to cut some of this off. Definitely. And I need to put it able to fit it and that's where I gotta pick that up and measure it. I really only have like four and a half inches that I can work with. So this is already three. So really uh, it looks like to me I'm only gonna be able to do a quarter of it. For right now 
I'm going to make it lot. I'd rather cut it a little too large so that I can cut it on down if I need to. And then we'll, um, we'll make it smaller if we have to, if, if it's a necessity to make it smaller, we will. And what did I do? I did it at the halfway mark, right? Oof, don't forget what you did it at. But you really could just lay this up here and tell yourself what you did it at. So it was, it was the halfway mark. <sighs> it's been a long day, so now my brain just really is not wanting to function. Of course, now I imagine some of you say my brain don't function all day. Some days it doesn't. But I hope you've at least been able to get some ideas from what we're doing. Okay. So, we cut that down and we cut it way too short, but that's okay. This is what we're going with. I really had not intended it to be that small, but that's okay. I like it. It's got the flower in it, which is what we were after, and we can put a pretty good size tag in there. So, this one is pretty much done, other than, other than just kind of staining my edge a little bit. I'll put my pocket down. Okay. Okay, so a glue spot. I didn't put my pen in my glue earlier. My glue will pop back off. I don't have a lot of trouble with this normally with my berry glue stopping up. And I said that, now look at it, but it's okay. I gotta go, this is the time. Clear it out. And out it pours, out it pours. I saw in our weather today, I'm in Eastern North Carolina. Near the beautiful Atlantic Ocean, I am between three rivers. I have the Noose, the Pamlico, let me see, the Noose, the Pamlico, and the Tar rivers surround me, plus a little place called the Swift Creek that is close to our home. And uh, the humidity here is horrendous. <laughs> There's no other word to say it today. The humidity is just horrendous here today. But you know what? We're going to deal with it. Because, I'll give it, let's see, this is uh, July, almost August, and August is our hottest month, and you know, that's what we saw in the weather, that, that this one, today was the coolest day we're going to have for quite some time. I'm, I'm holding it up to look at it, guys, just to make sure I got it straight, and I did. I like my little bit of stenciling on the book. Okay, we got one more page, and we're going to do our herring here, and he's already cut. So really, basically, all we've got to do is a little bit of stenciling off coming into here. And I definitely want the green. I don't really want a whole lot of um, pink. I want a little bit of green on that corner. So we're going to go in with something viney. If I can find something that's kind of viney, and I like this right here. If you can see it, it's kind of... Okay, I'll find the green. Get some on my brush and then start just, just, just that area there. Okay, so there gets my green. Let me look at my that again. Oh yeah, a little bit of that green popping out that corner looks really good. And I've got a little bit of that uh copy dye there, so we're gonna come on this side with something, and it doesn't matter if it's, some of it gets covered up. I'm going to go with the swirl right here, and, and the chi dye. I said coffee, but I meant the chi dye. We're going to come with that and bring it over a little bit, and see if it's going to pop out from behind the um, stencil a little bit. I'm not the greatest at stenciling on but you know, I like to do a little bit of it. I just think it adds a little something, so let's see if any of that popped out. Oh yeah, just a little bit. 
popped out, so that's pretty. I guess there's a little bit of color below. And now, up in this corner, again, I think we want to go with some kind of a flower. I really am still hesitant to put a rose on this. So I think we're going to do what we did over here, and we're going to do a combination, and I can't remember, we did, we did a very light dusting of pink first. So that's bad when you don't even remember what you did, but we get a light dusting of pink, very light, in this area. Overdo it. And my stencil slid a little, but you know I don't care because it's stenciling. I'm not after perfection, I'm just after some color. Okay, let me see what we got there. Okay, we got it right there. Okay, then I'm going to come in with my pretty blue, and, and I'll make them in with some green in a minute. Okay. There's my blue and my pink. Now I'm going to come in, I wish I hadn't moved that, but I did. So I'm going to try to line it up again, and that's a laugh. That is a laugh to try to line it up again. Hey, it might not be such a laugh. Okay. Okay. Hey, I think we might get it done. All right. Pop some green right in this edge. Now, what am I going to pop the green just in those little areas right, right, right there where, where the sticks are? Yeah, just a little bit of green. Not a lot. Oh, yeah, I like that. That's pretty. Okay, let's put all these upsides up because that's all the sense what I'm going to do on this book, I think. So, we'll put all these aside. Grab my stencils before I get too much more scattered on this desk. I have a great big bag full of stencils, so I try to keep, try to keep them together. So that's out of my way. Now, let's come back in with our gorgeous little herrings. And I'm going to glue them down, okay? Pretty, pretty little fellas. I am actually inking a little. I declare if I don't hear some rain, praise the Lord. Oh, yes, I will accept that with much graciousness. All right, that's going to be really pretty, guys. I, I really like the way the stands are turning out. So that just goes to show you, you don't always have to have the printed paper. You can take just the plain book pages that are left at the back of your book and just get you some stencils. Start collecting your stencils soon. And... I want to try to make sure some of my stitches are showing here, but I also want to make sure some of the, that tea dye shows through. Let me hold my book up before I press, make sure we're straight, we are, and we're going to push it down and push it down. Alright, so what we ended up with was the two pockets here, we're going to let them dry in our beautiful stenciling. Now we're going to have probably, both of these will have a um, tag in them. I don't have any cards that's that large, so it, we could put some drawing cards on this side, but we'll see. But I think tags. So that's got that one done, and um, I did get all the stitching finished, and I need to go ahead and ink up the final pages here. And I am going to try to make sure from this point on that everything is done on camera so you can actually see all these little pieces. Now this, there's some strings. We do really need to go ahead and trim those out. I've got strings here that I'm pulling from the sewing. I thought I had already trimmed all that off, but I didn't. And there again, I want to show you this back side. I, you can't really see the stitching. So I just gently come in and kind of color it with my sponge. And there I get a, little, a lot darker look there and that's because they just 
the back side punches the um, paper out a little bit. So you just kind of get a, a little bit of white in there from the paper, paper being punched. But I've gone in and actually colored it a little bit. You want to do it too much, just barely hitting it with the sponge is what we're trying to do. But anyway, that's got that done. Let's go ahead and get make sure all of our pages have some color around it. That one's done. That one's got color. This one doesn't, so let's just kind of sponge out some of the white area. Both sides. It doesn't matter if some of the white does peek through because, like I say, in this particular book, I have a lot of white in my um, graphics that I used. What you just saw me do again was adding um, a little bit of ink to the stitches on the back side where, where the um, machine had poked. holes in it and the white pokes through. There's other ways to do that. You can actually go in and this is my back page. I don't want to cover up all my white because it's definitely all in between there. So you don't want to cover it all up. But you do want this edge done. Because when you pick the book up you want to see the blue. Okay. I'm going to do this one too. So really light edge on this one. Don't want to cover my stenciling. I don't want to take from the stenciling. Okay. And same thing with this last page. We'll just color that right along the edge. And I'm just give a little bit of color. Okay. So I think the inking is done now. And our next project, we are going to try to figure out what we're going to put in it. Okay, we will start next on possibly, I think that's our next step now. I think what we need to do now is prepare a few of our um, tickets and tags and um, things that's going to go inside. So that's, that's what we're going to do now. So um, I'm going to gather my supplies and I'll be back with you. Okay, I'm back and we're ready to get started on finishing this part of the journal. Let's go. Um, we're going to um, work on tags and journal cards today for the um, Blue Tranquility book that we're doing. This is the author's book we've been working on. Um, if you remember, we've done quite, we've done all the two preps that were necessary. Um, in doing an order book, on my method, I have two prep steps. One is to actually prep the book, get the pages like I want them, and pocket some uh, and kind of mapped out where I want them. Then my second prep step of preparation is to actually put the whatever kit I decide to use in the journal kit, if I use a kit, whatever I decide to use in the journal, order book. I am um, go ahead and get that done. That's what I call our second our secondary prep. We have now finished that, as you see, we've got pockets everywhere, and big pockets, medium pockets, um, double pockets, triple pockets, small pockets, large pockets, all kinds. We've got stenciling in the book, we've got the kit in the book, we've got stitching in the book. We still haven't put our corner protectors on, but that is coming. I will get those hopefully printed tonight and, and cut out. So. What I'm going to do today is I'm just going to kind of lay our book aside because we've got to start deciding what we need. One of the things that we really need um, in here that's going to actually take some special prepping is the cards that's going to go in here. And it's going to take a, a lot of page. So I have printed some extras of the um, pages here. So what we're going to do to start with is we're going to measure about what we think we want a card to do and I think I'm going to want a card I think probably we got to allow about a quarter of an inch because when I stick my ruler in that's about the glue area on both sides 
I'm trying to make sure we've got about a quarter inch. So coming in about a quarter inch, looks like maybe six and a half inch card by, let's just say six and a half by four. Let's just cut our first one that size. Now you guys are getting to see me work without any preparation at all. So this is how I work when I don't have any real preparation. So I'm just going to come in and, and do what I do when I'm just journaling. I have had company all day, couldn't get in here and really make my plans. I've had other people in the shop working on other crafts. They found a new, uh, some kind of painting they were doing and, and I had a baby running around and I just didn't feel like I could video. Of course, I guess y'all wouldn't mind hearing baby in the background. I don't guess it would bother most of you, but I just didn't do it. I waited until they've all left and they've finally gone. But anyway, I'm just gonna prep along. Um, the way I do when I'm just doing, not when I'm not videoing. I'm really just in, in kind of a preparatory stage here, trying to decide what sizes we're going to do this. And I did say, I hope I did say six, I just slid that one. Now you saw me, I just slid it. Still having trouble with this left hand being able to put any weight down and hold this ruler. And, that's becoming a real issue, but I do go see the doctor tomorrow about some problems I'm having, so hopefully we'll get this straightened out, and I hope I'm not mumbling again today. I mumbled back the last couple of days, and I'm really sorry. I don't intend to do that, explain what had happened on another video. I'm not going to explain it again, but anyway, okay, I am going to cut this one. Get my little pencil here. I'm going to cut this one right about here, so that's right much coming off. I didn't mean to write on my book, so we'll erase that real quick. I hope this edge is straight, but I think that's the one I cut crooked. Get it on the line here. And we'll know in a few minutes. Well, yeah, it looks pretty straight there, so that's what I'm looking for, a straight line. And right down that line. Okay, so that should give me the size I need to get my card in, and it does. That's perfect. Okay, so next step. Next step is I have printed a lot of my background sheets on just basic 28 pound. Um, I've got it on the really nice brochure paper. So so I, I don't have that on card thought. So I'm actually going to have to do my big card in three layers. So bear with me. So the next layer we're going to do is our white card stock. And I just simply come in and glue it. And again, I forgot to put my needle up in it. And I've got a little, little bit of a clog. So bear with me because this needle will usually just pull it right on out. Again, my go-to glue, I think y'all already figured out my go-to glue is the Berry Art. And it does glue tight and it glues fast. But unfortunately with Berry Art glue, the same one thing is once it's down, you're not going to get it back up. So, all right, I can look at this piece right here. I can see, I think, that it is not straight. And I've got to straighten that out. You know what? We'll straighten it out after we get it off. We'll cut off this one. It's not a big deal. But my eye caught that really quick. That, that edge was not straight. Okay. This edge is really straight, but this one kind of goes in a little. And that's where I did it while ago. I saw myself do it when I was cutting with the blade. That's okay. We're going to get it straight. There is not a problem doing that. We'll put it down here first. Get it edged out. Get my trusty little press here. Get all the air from behind it. Okay, so now that's that one. Come back in with my scissors and cut. And again, we are at, we are going to be making German cards. We're going to make tags and German cards for a while, however long it you know, we can in about an hour. Whatever we can get done in an hour on this video. I try to limit my videos to about an hour. I might go sometimes an hour and ten minutes, but that'll be rare because I myself don't even like to sit that long and look at a video on YouTube. So I, I try to be courteous of you guys' time. 
when I'm making these videos so that you have time to look at the whole video in one sitting and and also follow along if you wish to do so. Okay, I cut just a little sliver off here and I think that was the side that I said wasn't quite straight. Okay, we're going to do that again. I'm having to cut through two layers and I'm trying to make sure my head's not popping up there in your way. Okay, one more time. Let's just, I feel like I filled it wrapped. That's another thing I have to be careful about. I, I, rub, I make my edges real rough if I'm not careful and my glue's not dried good. But my remedy for that is right here, which I like the rough edges on a lot of my books because um, it kind of gives it that vintage look. But I always sand where I think it's a little rough. Okay, so that got that one. All right, now let me see. Do we look straight? Now, this looks like the side that might curve in just a tiny bit. So we'll level it up here. See, yep, this see that? It's really almost an eighth of an inch off. So we're going to, so when you've got one side shorter, I always get the shorter side over. And that's where I cut from. I don't want to have to cut a lot off. And it's not going to be but a little bit of a sliver. I hope the glue dry so we don't get a bad cut mark here. Okay, yeah, there we go. Now she's straight. One more time, I need to measure it according to the pocket that's going to go in. And it's going in really nicely. Let's make sure it's going to go all the way down because we want it to go all the way in to the pocket and it won't quite go all the way in. So we're actually going to cut off one more little bit off this side. I like, I don't want to cut more of my flowers, so we're going to come on this side and cut just a tiny bit more because we want this card to go all the way down in the pocket because we're going to put a tab on it on this outside here and we're going to put a dingle dangle on it. If you recall in my other video, I told you we were going to use dingle dangles in this book. So you, we will be introducing, I'll be introducing you to dingle dangles. I'll be introducing you to decorated um, paper clips. So we're going to be doing a video doing these. These are real simple. Um, I might even do a few hidden paper clips on the same video I do with that. And if I have some of my shaped paper clips, which I have some shaped like a music note and things like that, I'll show you how I use those too. Okay, this one's going all the way down, I believe this time. If not, we're going to take my ruler. All right, there we go. you got a good solid edge, and you bump grab has got the place for it. So now what we're going to do, before I actually put the back sheet on, this is going to be my back, I think. I'm, I'm getting too partial to blue, I think, so I may even go, I think I'm going to go with this one, the white. That gives you a nice white, um, background for journaling okay but before we put this on we want to go find the tab my tab punch is what i'm going to use i'm not going to do anything extremely fancy i'm just using my basic tab punch but i am going to try to find something to match with some decoration on it some kind of pretty match there and i don't want to use my um Stuff that's usual elsewhere. And as you see, I'm just kind of looking through to find something that blends. This blends really well with this. I think. Oh, I'm thinking hard, guys. I really want a flower to show up there. I really am getting to the point. I think I'm going to have to print a few more. Nah, there we go. That'll work right there. There's all kinds of pages there that might have a flower we can pop on that corner and that's what I want to find is something that's got some flower to it let me look at this tab and see what okay look, another way I do that to see what I'm, my decoration is going to look like is to put, I put my tab in see that's all I'm going to get there but I have got that writing which is kind of pretty I kind of like that one so we'll hold that aside I don't really want the rose, but I like the butterfly too. Although I know we won't get much of her, we will get some. But the flowers here don't match those flowers. I'm trying to be too intricate, I guess. But sometimes that is how I am. 
And then this one, I can actually pick up those three pearls. I really kind of like that, but I really want just, if I'm going to do that, I want just the pearls. And I think that is exactly what we're going to go with. So I'm going to slide this in and kind of grab it and get it, what I think is straight. Okay, about that. Let me just look at it right quick. Okay, the tab is going to go behind like this. And I kind of like that, guys. I kind of like the pearls. I hope you can see it on the video. But I really like that. So we're going to go with that. Okay. And I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do one more. I have the same piece, I think. But just the piece is just odd because it's going to go on the back. See, I'm just going with it. Really just like that. Let me lay that aside. Okay, and the only reason I'm doing another piece to this is because it is because I want a little bit of strength. I don't need a real strong, but I need a little bit of strength on this, so I may even need to do more. I may need to have put a piece of, um, we're going to do that. Okay, I had to press down with that. I'm going to go ahead and glue it to this cardstock because this is going to be a tab. So guess what? You guys get to watch me cut it in. It's something I don't love to have to do in the videos, but that is part of crafting. So I guess we all get used to it, but I will cut as quickly as I possibly can. Cutting a 110 pound cardstock is not bad when you've got, like I say, this tab up here, of course. Now I could just tab out, which was what I should have done. Just, just pop the tab off the machine. That would have been the smarter thing to do, wouldn't it? I know everybody's hollering on the video now. Why didn't you do that? You had the tab punch, but that's okay. All right, so now we're going to put this one behind it. And now that gives us a nice, strong tab. Okay. And I've gotten right out of the video, hadn't I? Okay, just leave it to me. Okay. Little side of it. Okay, and I want to get rid of that white edge on this particular one. Not sure about the bottom, but that doesn't really matter because we're going to cover that up. Okay, we're going to put this tab right here. Let me see if this is the first. Let me make sure this is going in the first opening like that we have in the book because. The tab is going to the top, or the dingle dangle will go towards the top, wherever the tab is. So I think that is the first one like that. So we're going to glue right here. Right there. We're going to put it at the top, right there. Okay, let's once again, let's once again just check. Better to check and be right than to check and be sorry later. One more time, we're going to check, make sure we've got everything in place before we put our back in on there. It's going to slide in. There, our, our dingle dangle will hang off this tab. And even if you don't put a dingle dangle, you've got a nice tab there. Let somebody know there's something there. Put you got the thumb tab, let whoever's looking at the book know that there's something there. All right, so the next step here, and don't make a mistake, I, I have made a mistake so many times of, of of just gluing right down to the front and forgetting that I need to glue back to back, white to white, because the decorated side is what I want. Yes, I have done that a lot. Anybody else that says they hadn't, they're not being honest because it just sometimes you get going so fast you just not thinking and you do it the wrong way because you're looking at that pretty design thinking that's what you want and. Next thing you know, you have actually slapped your on the wrong side. So I don't mind telling you, I make mistakes. I make happy accidents all the time. Well, not all the time, but a lot of the time. I make happy accidents. And, now I, and I have made a few unhappy accidents, and they're, they're the worst. But I have made some happy accidents, and I've made some unhappy accidents. Okay, so now we're going to... Take our press, if I can figure out where I laid it under. Here, here I go again with all this junk piling up on the desk, and I hate it, but I just don't 
have much workspace under the camera here. I've changed cameras about a month ago, which I like this camera as far as the, what it looks like on screen, but it doesn't give me that wide space. And if I do get wide space, it means I have to go up, so then you're, then you're, then you're way far or you can't see the project up close as we're working on it. So I guess until I get rich and can do it by expensive um, <laughs> my weirdest stuff with me and they can do with what we've got. And I apologize if it bothers you. But we're just going to have to make do until Hubby and I can do better. Alright, what I need to do here is I need to cut this piece off because I've already decorated the back of that and I really don't need that piece right there. So I'm just going to come in a ruler underneath like that. This is, this is just me. I don't know if this works for other people, but a little bit of roughness there, but I will take my blade and fix it. I can, if I cut lightly, I won't cut through the other sheet. And I usually can trim it right on off. One more little spot there. See if I can grab it. I don't like the wall edges. Might be because I glued it down. That might be what's going on right there. And I can't sand that too well because the tab is there. But you see, these are just little things I do, and we just may have to make do with that. I'm going to tell you what just happened though, and I, uh, there did a, a happy little accident, and I call it a happy little accident because it can be easily remedied. We're just going to cut us out another piece out of that same pattern paper that we were using, and I'm going to glue it down. Okay, I don't want that part. And there's nothing wrong with that hanging over, really, is there? Uh, I really don't want it. That was the whole purpose in waiting to cut it, so we didn't have that tab there. But now now that's where I'm just getting to be too wishy-washy. As my mom would say, you're being wishy-washy. My blessed mother, I miss her so much. She was a one-of-a-kind human being. Of course, I think everybody feels that way about their mother. Well, excuse me, I know everybody doesn't, but uh, most people feel that way about their mother. That she was a one of a kind, special mom. That's the kind of mom everybody should have. It's sad in this world to see some children so neglected. I did have such a special mom. My, my, my precious mother. I remember we'd work two and three jobs to be able to do things we needed or get the things we needed. She just always made sure we had, even at times when she didn't. So treasure your mom, guys. She's, um, she's, they were, moms were special. All right, let's ink her up. I think our card is done. Hey, guys, do y'all want to fix the corners? You want to leave it square? Or do you want to? Round it, or do we want a fancy corner on here? Let's see. I think I'm gonna, I hope it's dry enough. Oh, I see a little bit of white showing here. I don't, you know what, let's try it this way first. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't have to trim it anymore. Let's ink it up again. Again, we're using the um, Salty Ocean um, Distress Oxide. That's the color I'm using on this. You can use your um, antique, um, your antique, or your photo, antique photo, or something like that. Your antique photo, sorry, or your tea stain, any of it. All right, guys, I think I'm going to go with a fancy corner here, and that is if I'm dry enough to do it. I don't. I'm missing part of this. So that one won't be doing it. It has to be this one. I have to have these braces on mine or I can't punch my corner properly. Alright, and we're going through three layers, so we went. 
I got a free fancy corner on that one. Let's see it. Okay. That one. And I'm not going to be able to do the tab side, so. Um, that didn't work out right at all. But okay. I feel okay. And then I'm going to just come in here and just kind of do that. Oh, what a holes are. All right, guys, so we've got our first pocket um, card, big card. Now, this card can be further decorated, okay? And let me show you some ideas. I don't know that I'm actually going to do anything else to it, but there are ideas you can do here. If you wanted to add a little color, you could come in with um, die cuts. I have lots and lots of die cuts. You can come in with die cuts, or you can come in with clip art that you've already got done out clipped out this is really gonna look, looks kind of pretty to me i'll go with that that die cut in the back of him like that now i think that's what we're gonna do let's go with it let's see what we can do to fancy this card up a little put our beautiful herring right there somebody told me that was a crane i, I think it's a herring but they may be in the same they may be similar so you know, yeah i'll have to look it up sometime I'm not much for arguing about what people tell me about what's what. I just call it what. I bought the clip art and the clip art said Harry. Let's put it that way. So that's what the artist who made it called it was a Harry. Okay, and let's see. How does that look? I've got that one there. And maybe a light blue. Oh, I kind of like that, guys. Y'all like that? Let's, let's go for it. Let's just go for it something a little different um i'm not much on decorating most of my cards i usually if because i usually sell my books and if i sell them then of course i have to leave some things for the person that purchased it to be able to um personalize it or make it their own so I, a lot of times i don't actually do these but i'm going to since i'm doing a, a instructional video here i am going to do it on these instructional videos because that's why you're here I'm sure to watch a video to get an idea of what to do with so there's that one I'm sorry I get so quiet I have I have really thought about just making videos silent and and then just doing an over voice when I'm editing just at certain points, I am really seriously considering it. I really think you guys probably get very tired of hearing me talk. I get tired of hearing myself talk. Maybe that's the problem. I like this one. I'm going to set it kind of at an angle. Uh, this is Tim Holtz. Um, I don't know which one. And I'm not going to promise I'm going to put it in the description. A lot of people say they put it in the description. But you know, if you specifically want to know what Jai Cuts um, packages these are from, make a comment to me on the comments. And I promise you, I will get back with you on the answer. Okay. That one. And then we're going to get pretty, this pretty light blue right in here. So he's kind of hiding in the weeds of his little pond there. I'm still in the video. Okay. Alrighty. Just like that. And we're going to come in and trim it off. Right here. Okay. And I'm going to see if I can find a dingle dangle and my crocodile. I should have had it back here, but I don't have it with me. And I will be right back and I'll get that part of it. I, I've thought about doing this at the end, but I'm going to go ahead and do the dingle dangle so you guys know what it looks like. And what I'm sorry. I didn't mean to click it off that quickly, but I'm going to go get it, the dingle dangle so you can see what dingle dangles are. And I will be right back, I promise. 
Okay, guys, I'm back. I am really going to have to say I'm a little disappointed because, unfortunately, I couldn't find the pack of Dingle Dangles that I had recently worked on. But that's okay. I'm going to do, and this particular, just for this one, I'm going to actually take and just show you a trick that I use. This is my little granddaughter's love dangles. These are also very similar to her dangle dangles. The only difference is these are, are a little bit bigger. And these are earrings, by the way. She can specifically make these for dangle dangles. But it's a pair of earrings. Okay. And what I have that goes with them, that I can use with them is, I have little um, oh, lobster claw hooks. Okay. And I'm going to use something else that I don't use real often, so you're going to have to bear with me. And that's my crocodile. I don't use it all that often. I don't know why these are hooked like this. So they must be for chains that are to, to join something. So we're going to do a little bit of operating here. Something I don't do very often, especially on video. But we're going to operate a little bit. We're going to take one of the lobster claws off and we're going to leave the O-ring in place. What I'm going to do on the earring is go in and pop off the hook here. Go back over here, open that O-ring up a little bit more, and I'm going to slide the um, dangle on the earring, on the O-ring here, close it back up. Alright, so there is what will be hanging off our tab. Now, crocodile, I don't use it that often, crocodile. So bear with me. Alright, I've got to find what color we're going to use on this edge and I'm probably going to go with this blue. I don't usually use a lot of color but there's a blue one so. Alright I'm going to go all the way up here in this corner and I want it close. I don't I want it close because the lobster claw hook isn't going to work if you put it way deep in so I hope that I can eyeball this really well but anyway, that's where we put our hole, right on that corner, right on it, okay? Okay. I'm going to press it. And because of my arm bothering me like I have, this is not going to be easy today, but I've got that on. All right, now let's just hope that this lobster claw is big enough to hang the dangle dangle through. I'm not sure that it is. I think this is too fat. But you're getting the idea of how to do it anyway. Oh, we got it. Alright, so there's the dingle dangle hanging off the edge. When it's in your book, and like I say, this one's a little, this, these beads are a little larger than I like to use. But because the page is not going to close on it, it is not really going to be that much of a problem. Okay, and you see that little place I just hooked? That's another thing. Make sure that your little, all your little pieces that you attach to this card is glued down. I've caught two of them right there, but I didn't glue down good. Because they will snag and tear, and you do not want that to happen. So let's try that again. And then you're going to slide your card in, and there's your dingle dangle hanging off your book. Okay, guys, that's what you get when you close your book. All right, there's your dingle dangle. We will actually, I think, if I'm not mistaken, we actually have three places in here. Let's let's go look. All right, so that there's number one. Yeah, we just did that one in. We got number two right here, and number three. I don't think we have any more. I think that's it. One, two, three. So what we will have is we will have a dingle dangle here, and then we'll come in and put another tab a little bit further down, like in here. And then one all the way to the base. Now, I'm not sure on the second one, if we, we may even have to put it right there where the thumb grab is. But anyway, we were actually going to spread them out evenly. And then you'll have a row of dangles hanging on the outside of your book. Um, kind of similar to, you know, lace being out there. And we may still lace up some pages. So anyway, there's the dingle dangle that I promised to show you. Um, 
So I, uh, I apologize that I couldn't find the small ones, but it still worked out where we could actually see how it was done. Let me slide my crocodile back because I, it is, never is outside this box. I'm sorry, I don't know what just happened. It, it clicked off, my video clicked off for a second. So just, I'll, I'll check and make sure it's okay. Yeah, our time is still working. All right, so let's set and click aside again. I was able to show you Dingle Gang Dangle. That makes me really happy that we can do that. So let's go and see if we, we've got a belly band here. And we just kind of, let's see if we can find a place that we really, we, well, we've already done a belly band. I think I showed you this one. Um, so I don't know if we want to do another one or not. I don't really want it to the bridge beside the chair. It would need to be an outside scene. If I was going to put a belly band on anything, it would be right here on this page. And I think that's what we're going to do. Belly bands are simple, and so while we're just doing, learning what we're doing, let's just go ahead and do the belly band. I'm going to, again, because I have printed everything on the 28-pound paper, it is not strong enough to... um. Just uses a belly band just like it is. It would rip and tear. So again, we're going to glue up these edges here really good. And we're going to put it on to a piece of card, 110 pound card stock. Well, even 65 is fine because you've actually got three layers here by the time you put the um, decorative piece on the side. And this one you have to kind of slide over because you've got a little curvature there. But okay, again. I work out as much air as I possibly can from behind and make sure the glue is spread. Okay. Let's just do a one cut thing. Let's just do it so, and I'm sorry I'm getting out. I'm going to have to try flat over so I don't keep getting out of frame for you guys. Alright, let's cut this. I'm going to do a one cut. And what I mean, instead of sitting there printing this out one time and then sitting there and doing it again, we're going to just do it one time. I can either put this on as my backing. And that's got a lot of, well, there's a little bit of pink there, so we can go with the pink on this one. So, again, we're going to glue white to the white. Remember that, white to the white. So, you put your pretty print side on the other side. White to the white. And I know that you experience people, this is, I'll repeat, but anybody that's new, I welcome you and you can a piece of cardstock. How that happened? All right, this is cardstock. No, I'm sorry, guys, I lost track of my own self. That's my printed paper. Oh my goodness! I think at six o'clock in the evening it is time for me to call it a day. Even though I didn't get a lot done today, it's all right, now, now, I've only, only got to cut once by doing that. I'm going to go in and really burp this back good. And we're going to go in now and cut the belly down out. And I will remind you again, when you're cutting circles out, you don't turn your scissors, you let the paper, you turn the paper. The paper is, is a, a guide here. And I'm going to show you one more time. I've said this in a couple of videos. When I start cutting circles, I turn on my paper, not my scissors. And then you may do a little of both, but you definitely got to turn on that paper. Okay? Um, if I had another one of these already cut out, I would tell you another little trick I do, but I don't have one. But if I did have another one of these bands already cut out, I would cut the whole circle out again and just, just make pockets or something out of, of it. Okay, we're actually going to go ahead and ink around this. And we may have to trim off the top and the bottom a little bit on this belly band. It really depends. Because as you're, as you're working with an altered book, sometimes, honestly, sometimes, depending on how they glue together. Oh, goodness, it's why. Um, we, we, 
lose a little bit of height here. So we are going to have to cut off about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Not much, but a little bit. To get the fit like I like them to fit. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that goes to show you this Billy Band got um designed just a tiny bit larger. And it's I'm gonna offset it a little. I'm going to cut a little off each end because that end looks like it's got a little bit of unevenness to it. Now let's look at it this way. If this end is totally even, we'll cut it off the other, and it is so. All right, so we'll just do it this way. That's what happens when you scissor cut. Now we still got a little bit of uneven. Trim off both sides. Safe way, trim off both sides. And I'm going to have to cut it, well, I first say twice, but I'm going to have to. And again, I started out and That's my little scissor trick right there. If you lay your scissors, lay it across that blade and go down, you get a good straight cut too. If you ever do cut off this tiny bit that you didn't want to or didn't want to cut a little bit crooked. Okay, let's get this in. Cut off a little and see if it's going to work on the book. And now I'm going to show you something. Isn't that one of a trick? Okay, that's good there. Okay, so... When you're doing a belly band, this is just a simple, straight belly band that we're just simply going to glue down in our book for decoration purposes. And you can glue it closer to the right and stick something in that way, or closer to the back and stick it in that way, or right in the center. And I'm, I'm going to go a little bit more to the center of the book so that I can get a nicer fitting card or something off that end. Okay, again... I like to press really hard on this. And you gotta be careful not let it slide. I just slid just a little so pretty glue really taste and slide a little. Okay, now I do have another printed piece. It comes like this. So we're gonna do we're gonna do two things with this. I'm gonna show you two things. And you may have seen it in one of my other videos, but you're going to get to see it again here. And hopefully I can do one more belly band and show you a trick with that one too. Let's just set it aside because I'm feel sure I've already got all those ta tags cut out. But that's another thing. With these pre-printed pre tags, with the pre-printed tags, just because you've used it once in the book doesn't mean you can't use it in another place. By actually adding... Um, die cuts to it or um, fussy cuts, um, tabs, tags, whatever. You can add other things to this and change the look of it. And the same, the same um, tag can be used several times in your book and it can have a different look. So, um, you know, don't hesitate to print your tags two or three times because you probably can use them several times. Now, I want you to, when you're, when you're doing this, we are not going to waste, okay? So, what we're going to do is be very, very careful when we're cutting this little, see, it's kind of, it's not quite a circle, not quite an oval, it's kind of, kind of in between. But we're going to be really careful, and we're going to try to cut it as close as we can there. Again, don't cut all out here. I'm going to show you why. Okay. Put it here. If you're in a, in a, in a, 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 a scrape, and you're wanting to add stuff to your book, but you need your book to stay flatter. So we'll just sit this aside a second. What you just ended up with... With two pockets. You can go into another page, not back right there, we've already done all that. Let's just find another blank page for a second, preferably one that's solid, like this, and you can actually use these like this on a page. 
So don't throw these away. When you cut circles out of your belly bands or different things, don't ever throw your pieces away. Be cautious. Keep your mind working and say, what else can I do with that piece that I'm cutting and how else can I use it? So, you know, this is this is a good way. You got you got a page here and you can actually put two little pockets on it. It's nice and flat. Of course, you're going to probably have to design um, your journal cards to go in it, but that's okay. That's part of crafting. So these are going in our little stack over here, and we are probably going to actually do something with them. Just because I think you see that it's important to know what to do with them. Okay, this. What are we going to do with this? Okay. We're going to actually make this where it stands up. Take another piece of our 110, and we're going to glue this on to it. But I'm going to show you a little trick, because I like these little guys to really stand up. Okay, so I'm going to lay that aside just a second. And I'm actually going to fold my piece of cardstock over like this. Okay, and then I'm actually going to glue my cardstock like this. Okay. Guys, I'm going to tell you, I've got somebody coming in. I just heard her drive up on her little moped, so excuse the background noise real quick. Okay, now I've got two pieces of 110 pound there, and I'm going to lay this on top of this like, like so. I'm going to lay it on top, and then I'm going to press. So now I've actually got this two layers thick. Alright, so now we're going to cut it out. Uh, that's a little trick I use quite often to get a good thickness, like if I want a three-dimensional looking thing. Again, again, turn your thing. It's a little thicker. The glue is not quite dry, and I would normally let it dry before I cut, but because we're timing ourselves in this video, it's not drying. And again, like I told you guys, I did not pre-prep for this video at all. So you actually see Nana Kay working in her raw environment. This is what I do. So this is Nana Kay raw and uncensored. <laughs> All right, so go here. And if you have a large circle punch, you can actually punch that out. It might not fit here though, because I do not think this is a totally round circle. And I honestly, I actually got a little point here I don't like. So, what I do with little points I don't like, again, is my trusty sanding block. I know you guys are probably thinking, that guy is nuts, but hey, this works for me. Paper is just wood that's been mulched or poked down, so you can actually sand it. So, I just kind of sand around the edge like that, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ink it again one more time. Now, you could go one step further <laughs> if you wanted to. We're not going to do it this time, I promise. But if you wanted to print that page again, you could actually cut the sweet out, do the same thing, put it on a piece of 110 cardstock, and make the sweet stand out also. We're not going to do that, that this time. We're, what we're going to do here is look at this. So we're going to lay this over. So what that does, it does give you a little bit of a, a dimension on that belly band. And something else you can do, and this is strictly up to you, but you also have the option of only gluing part of it down and using that for a tuck spot as well. On this particular one, I'm not going to because I'm going to put some really pretty card here. But you can actually, when you're gluing these pieces down, make them into tuck spots. But on this incident, let's just go ahead and glue this one down. Okay. All right, so that gives me a little bit of a three-dimensional look there. I love it. Something else that would be so cute there, and I'm going to do it if I can find a piece real quick of something. I'm on the side over here looking through my rambling. I'm not going to say looking. I'm here rambling. Rambling through my beautiful, gorgeous ribbons. I don't want nothing quite that big. I think this is all I want right here. This, this little piece right here. I'm just going to cut me a snippet. I'm going to pull this up before it cries real quick. Now, like I said, I'm very good. Oh, man, it will, it will tack down really quick. 
And I'm just going to put a little snippet of lace. I don't like that one though. I think I want white. I don't want pearly. That's too big. Now that's a shame. It's not, oh, I like this one. I like this one. Just going to put me a little snippet of lace behind it right, right there. Just that little bit. A piece of tool would have been pretty puffed up right there also. Um, I'm not sure that the art glue is going to hold that. But we're going to try it. I think it will. Once, uh, once it dries, I think we're going to have a solid piece. Here we go. Where is my little smoothing tool, guys? Can you see it? Oh, there it is. Wow, I got thrown way up there. I must have actually slung that. Okay. Got a little bit of glue right here. What did I tell you all about a little bit of glue? Lightly, lightly, lightly erase it. And it will usually come off. Not every time, guys, but most of the time it will. Okay, there's that. Page done. Cute until we decide um, what we're going to put inside. Now, if you want some more whimsical look to it, you can add another one of these. Come in and add die cuts. I'm not sure I want it, but I might. I have a small pink one. I think I will. And I got a cute, cute green piece of wheat. Oh, I got a strip of thread. I kind of like that. But now remember, you're all a belly band, so you can't let it hang over on this one. I'm not sure. Do you like that? I think I just want the two, the two small ones, maybe. Right there. Right here. Or... I'm going to do my stuff a little bit up here in this corner. And again, I've got a lot of stuff on the desk. And guys, forgive me. I've got a lot of stuff cut out up here too. Not, not so much small stuff. But I think I think I am going to go with this just just for fun. Let's just do it for fun. Just get used to using a lot of different elements in our book. Especially if, if we can keep it flat, because we are going to do some flip outs. And, and I don't know if you remember the very first video in my book, it was very thin. I had thinned it out very much. And now it's not so thin. It's starting to, it's starting to chunk out a little as we have been adding things. I wish I had my wipes up here. Don't like my glue peeking out from under like that. Tap on my fingers, it will draw it down some. And then we're going to do a little piece of greenery. Now I almost do that. A little piece of greenery working out right there. Cut it off. And let's see if we can actually uh, work this blue one in. Since we're doing so much blue. Yep, I'm going to tear it off right there and use that in another spot. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Why not? Oh, and that, that's not pretty. And now I want one more thing. Yep, see, this is what happens when you start doing it. You start saying, I want one more thing. Well, guess what we're going to go for? We're going to find a butterfly. If I can find one I really like in here, we're going to go with a butterfly. Do I want a green butterfly? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like that. I kind of like my two butterflies. So, oh. and I'm not even going to blue, blue up the edges of these because they're green and I'm going to go. I think they're really moths though. I don't know if anybody told you, but these are moths. They're still pretty. <clears throat> One there. Pick up these. Get them out of my way. Back in my little bag up here. My little junk nest. 
and then I'm going to pull one off. This is starting to curl, so but, but I will push this under the um, press later. It'll, it'll roll down a little bit. And like your, I already had a butterfly up there, so let's just cover that one up and use the green since that's the thing we went with. Okay, that, that kind of fancy that up a little bit, guys. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so you've got your little bit of lace under it. You've got room for your card. So now what we need to do, since it's a bridge and a pretty look like that, let's look at what cards we might want to put in it. I think that's what I'm going to go with, that one pretty card right there. It's got a, it's a lily pond, and the colors blend with this. So this is our next one. So right quick, let's grab our, this is our background paper, our card stock. Let's make this, this card real quick. And I think on this one, we're just going to fancy the edges on it too. Let's work quickly. We're almost in one hour. And we didn't even get a cotton picking tag done. But we did get a drum card done. Well, we're going to work. And we are going to get a drum card done right here. Okay. Speak slowly. Okay. And White to white, remember guys, white to white. You know, when you're doing your journal cards, white to white. You need to get your pretty background. White to white, okay. Smooth out, get all the air out from under it. This is really another term people call this is welding or welding the um, papers together. Okay, so now let's cut these out. You can use a scissors or your blade, depends on what you're more comfortable with. In some instances, I am better off with the blade. In some instances, I'm better off with the scissors. One more time, press, one more time, all right, uh, grab my tool, now we're not dry good, so I'm probably going to just keep pressing on this a minute, matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and do this before I actually punch this corner, and I wouldn't, I would punch this corner around if it was going in a pocket somewhere, but since it's going to be protruding out on each side of this, it's going to be sticking out on each side here, we're going to want to make it a little fancy here. Okay, I just hope we're ready. So I'm going to put it in, make sure it's in the right position. Oh, I stamped it. It's tough. That was a tough one. Ooh, trying to break my finger now. Okay. okay, got it. All right, that got much better. And I felt a lump here, so I am going to burp it one more time. I don't know why I felt a lump, but I felt like I felt a lump where the air had gotten under the two sheets. And it's out. Okay, now we got that one done. It's going to go in place. And you see what I mean about the corners being fancy? Let me get really underneath. The fancy corners are sticking out, and that just looks real attractive in the book. Okay, guys, we were at 56 minutes on this video, actual record time. Um, I think what we'll do is maybe do a tag. Just a simple, no, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We've already got a belly band in here. Let me show you a trick on this other belly band. You see this beautiful belly band here? I printed another one. Where did I print it? Well, I thought I printed another one. I did. I printed another one. Let me show you what I'm going to do with that one in this next few minutes. We won't go much over an hour, I promise. But I'm going to show you what we're going to do on this one. Okay? 
you see all this intricate design here I'm actually going to like a tuck spot using this one now you don't have to cut out the, the, all the intricacy that is in there like this but you can cut out some of it like I am going to cut out the butterfly and I, of course it's all this wing here now when we get down back down into where the um, design starts I am not cutting out all that ribbon I am cutting it off because you're going to see the ribbon from the background okay and now we're just going to cut it here and we're going to cut it here on the side and again we're going to go in with 110 pound cardstock for the back and we do not need to put a printed piece of paper on it there's no purpose in it and I think I'm going to cut the darkness off right here this is where I had actually three-dimensionalized it on it's a print okay so what we're going to do now right here we're going to come in and put it on the we're going to glue it to the 110 because we want it to have some sturdiness Move the ink a little bit, but that's okay. We're getting all that off. Just move all that black ink and that butterfly. Again, dry a few seconds. It doesn't take very, very long to dry. Okay. Get your excess off, and then you're going to go around it one more time. Try not to cut into your design any more than you've already, already cut out. It's really kind of easy. I have learned a trick, and I've got my scissors held wrong, so that's part of my problem. I've learned a trick, though. If I hold my scissors a little bit sideways, I don't have as much trouble cutting out around the design. And again, when you're fussy cutting, you let the paper do the walking, not the scissors. You just simply move the scissors up and down according to how you're cutting. But you cut like that. You move the paper. And yes, yeah, sometimes you're turning the scissors a little, but for the most part, the scissors are just being guided by the paper instead of the paper being guided by the scissors. And I cut, I have fussy cut a long time. If you were to come in my shop and go into my storage unit or my supply room, which I have a 12 by 50 mobile home full of supplies, you will find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, possibly thousands upon thousands of pieces of fussy cut that I've already cut out. Uh, that was the first thing I started doing because I don't know, since I was a child, I've always loved to cut. My husband's always called me the cut color queen. And sometimes it wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't saying it being nice because when I cut, the whole floor and everything else stuff full of paper but that's okay now here's the nice part we are going to make a tuck spot on top of our belly band so we are actually only going to and yes we're going to use the back of this one you're going to put it as close to the edge all the way up as you can and, and you get a decent amount, but not so much that you can't that it spreads forward. And we'll show you how to keep your glue from spreading forward into your um, open area. First thing you do is you lay it down, get it positioned where you want it. And this one is not balancing totally exactly in the same spot, but that's okay. But so that you don't get it going into the open pocket area. You take and start behind the glue and pull it out. Make sure you wipe off the blade or whatever you're using. But this is how you do it. You do it the same way when you're working with a cellophane. You want to pull away from the cellophane window so that you don't get glue on the cellophane. So same thing, same scenario here. And then once you've got it down, let's stop. Now, they didn't take us long. We went a minute, I mean a second over. But there, there is your tuck spot. So you can actually put in a small, maybe a small strip of tickets or something, and then you still got your belly band underneath. 
So this is Nana Kay. I'm going to sign off. You've seen a lot many little things. We've done a lot of this one page because this is the page that the um, first card went in. And then now we've done the band, belly band on two off of the... Um, we've done the touch spot on top of the belly band. And then we've actually done another belly band today and another journal card. So that's where we're going to stop today. When we come back, we're going to actually just probably just do some prepping on, on just what we have on the desk here. Just prep them up a lot, which means prepping means I'm going to put decorative paper behind them along with the um, card stock, give them some strength, because I like my tags and my cards to be strong. So that's what we'll be doing, and then we will decide what ones will fit in what we've already got, and decide what ones we have to make from scratch. So, this is Nana Kay with NanaKayDesigns.com signing off, and the Alder's Book Nook on Etsy. And we will be back tomorrow and continue making tags and um, journal cards. Bye-bye.